What's going on July enthusiasts? Ben here and I just wanted to offer a quick apology for the tardiness of this Game of the Month video, but I'm on holiday, you see, in France. Now, landmass fans will know France to be the fictitious setting of mega blockbuster huge ubi hit smasher Assassin's Creed Unity, but a quick Google search revealed it is a real life place, and now I'm here. As are the flies. Thankfully, while I was partaking in the genocide of this beastly winged species, our team was hard at work writing words about games, which ultimately is why you're all here. Let's have a look at five of them's. Following in the veins of Ultimate Super Duper Mega Ultra Fantastic Heifer Street Fighter 4 Supreme Master of All Time and Space Edition comes the PS4 re-release of Guacamelee, simply titled Guacamelee Ultimate Super Duper Mega Ultra Fantastic Heifer Supreme Master of All Time and Space Edition. At the risk of sounding incredibly dull, can we stop all this ridiculous naming nonsense? I appreciate that in this particular case it was probably poking fun at the likes of Street Fighter, but there are numerous PR individuals out there nervously dabbing their brows on a daily basis as their bosses increasingly wonder what it is they actually do, and it's getting rather silly now. Don't get me wrong, I love a good re-release. In fact, I've been buying the same edition of Toothpaste for over 10 years, but I probably wouldn't be any more inclined to do so if it was named Colgate Super Turbo Championship Edition. It's confusing to consumers, hell, it's confusing to industry supremos such as myself. It has to stop. As for the game itself, it's all about a lucha who dies or something. Good stuff. Do you remember the 90s? It's what is commonly referred to in the video game industry as that time before Minecraft. Back in those days, a different breed of industry mascots stomped and uh, farted around, with one of the most beloved and esteemed of these mascots being Abe of Abe's Odyssey. Now, after almost two decades of patient waiting, Abe's original adventure has been remastered, and I don't have a problem with its name being potentially misleading, as I'll explain in a minute. Relive that famous moment when Abe did a fart on a thing, and then farted again. And again! It will surely bring an excruciating tear to even the hardest hearted of individuals. As for why I don't have a problem with the name, it's quite simple really. I believe it has been long enough since the original was released for it to be named something completely different, and there not to be any issues with confusion. Simply whacking a load of buzzwords and hashtag thinking outside the box mumbo jumbo is not an acceptable way to title your re-release. Alright? Good. Which coincidentally is what this game is. That's good. That's good stuff. You should play it. The world of human cloning is a scientific nightmare, and in The Swapper, you'll tackle that minefield head on, wrote Push Square's pet Australian Kel Anderson, and he's not wrong. The Swapper throws you sweet, clonable DNA first into a nightmarish puzzle world where while cloning yourself is the only way to proceed, you feel like a moral compassless ass at the same time. We're always fascinated by games that explore the more taboo areas of the human experience, as they can do so from an angle that's unique to the medium. You can relate to a character in a book and visualise them doing something bad, you can relate to a character in a film or TV show and watch them doing something bad, but assuming control of a relatable character and actually doing something bad is another thing entirely. It is participation that sets video games apart. You did that questionable thing to that man over there, now feel sorry for yourself and regret everything. Go on. As Kel went on to wrap up, The Swapper is an indie puzzle platformer with a gameplay hook which is cleverly married to a grand operatic narrative. Its strange visuals and atmospheric soundtrack augment this vision, creating a wholly unique and cohesive experience. Thanks, Kel. Rogue Legacy is... Oh, come on, you bugger. Dead again. Rogue Legacy is a game where... Come on. Rogue Legacy is a game where you die a lot. It is a dangerous time sink that should be discouraged due to- Come on, yes, 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 Really? It is a dangerous time sink that should be discouraged due to its insane level of addictiveness. Oh, so close, so close. Basically, you are a night person tackling a big old dungeon, but not before spawning a great big brood of kids. When you inevitably die during your quest to slay all of the bosses, several of your key statistics pass on to your next generation of adventurers, from whom you pick the individual that will continue your legacy. It really is quite ingenious, and did incredibly well on the PC before its cross-buy, cross-save, PS4, PS3, and PS Vita release. That's right, it's cross-buy and cross-save, meaning you can take your addiction with you wherever you- oh, so close. 
that's right. It's cross buy and cross save, meaning you can take your addiction with you wherever you. Come on, you can do this. Meaning you can take your addiction with you wherever you. <sighs> meaning you can take your addiction with you wherever you. <clears throat> take your addiction with you wherever you. <sighs> so close. Addiction with you wherever you. Yes. <clears throat> go wherever you go. Take your. Uh, where, your addiction with you. Surprised? Nah, I didn't think so. This is the second time that The Last of Us has won our esteemed Game of the Month award, with the PS3 edition going on to bag our PS3 and overall Game of the Year 2013 gong. Get in. We don't really need to tell you why it's good anymore. If you've played it once, the multiplayer's pretty bloody fantastic, and the game itself is well worth a retread with a new difficulty mode and all new shiny mushroom people visuals. And if you're new aboard the good ship PlayStation, settle in for one hell of a ride. The Last of Us is, quite simply, a masterpiece. The PS3's swan song has somehow become one of the PS4's best games, and perhaps even more impressive than anything else is that they didn't give it a stupid name. Bosh. Remastered. Simple. Right? Hmm? Metro? Guacamele? Street Fighter? Stop it. Thanks for watching, y'all. If the flies don't get me, I'll be back next month. Oh, and be sure to subscribe and leave a comment. Au revoir!